how did we start believing that meat will give us cancer? We'll find out in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. Yesterday I went to my favorite diner to get some lunch and to work on my next blog post and happened to overhear a conversation of two men deciding what to get for lunch. They would like to get some burger or steak, but because red meat can give you cancer, they opted for a Belgian waffle with lots of whipped cream and maple syrup and some turkey stew with mashed potatoes. Now, why would these men believe that meat is bad for them? Well, in not so distant past, about 2015, the World Health Organization classified processed meats as group one carcinogens in the same category with smoking and asbestos. You heard it right, that's right, asbestos. And fresh red meat as a probably a carcinogen group 2A. The World Health Organization was prompted to classify red meat as a carcinogen and probable carcinogen based on the report compiled by International Agency for Research on Cancer that evaluated about 800 epidemiological studies, 400 of which uh, focus on the processed meats. Of those epidemiological studies, 29 were uh, chosen by the WHO as those that were informative about the connection between colorectal cancer and consumption of red meat. And of those 29 studies, 14 of them showed a possible connection between the colorectal cancer and consumption of red meat, and 15 of them did not show it. All studies that showed um, a protective effect of red meat on human health were not considered in that report. All right, so let's talk about epidemiological studies. It's not as complicated as you may think. It is basically observational studies, which let's say there is a population of people that have been diagnosed with colorectal cancer, and then they get the survey to answer how much meat they consume in a day, week, month, or six months, or whatever the period that is being decided on and then you get all the data for the population that you were analyzing and you get to establish hypothesis. Maybe there is a correlation that people that eat meat also have cancer, but this isn't causation. The scientific method will then require you to test those hypotheses to prove it or disprove it in the clinical settings, which is called experiments. When it came to the experimental studies, there were total of six experimental studies. Three of them were done solely on rodents. Uh, one of them were mixed humans and rodents, and two of them were done exclusively on humans. Of those studies, four of them were conducted by a single research group, which shouldn't be happening because of the biases, but that's how it was done. The first experiment started with a description of 12 prior studies on rodents showing either no connection between meat consumption and cancer or in fact protective effects of meat on cancer risks. None of these studies made it to the whole report. The rats that were used in the experiments were either pre-injected with a carcinogen, that's right, or were bred to be highly susceptible to cancer. I was so blown away by the information that I was digging out, how they actually carried out those experiments, that I will share with you one of them in my Friday findings, so stay tuned and you will be really surprised. Now you probably want to know how the meat causes the cancers, and unfortunately the report wasn't able to answer it conclusively. It was all in the realm of hypothesis that processes of curing uh, cause meat to make compounds that are carcinogenic to humans and also cooking meats in very high temperatures. So things like pan frying, grilling, barbecuing uh, will lead to development of uh, harmful compounds that can lead to cancer. Now, I want to emphasize it really well. It is all a hypothesis that has not been proven. 
One important takeaway from this report is that indeed processed meats aren't ideal for humans and that is not because the processed meat itself is bad but because the processes used to get to the processed meats are problematic namely the use of nitrates that are known to be harmful to humans so either get uh, processed meats that are made traditionally so I love hot dogs but I get them from the butcher box or if you cannot get the good source of naturally traditionally made meats then just avoid them altogether and stick to the fresh red meat what the report doesn't address is what happens to the human health if you cut out red meat completely from your diet or even reduce it significantly as we know iron deficiency are the most common in the world and yet the red meat is the best source of heme iron the most bioavailable form of iron red meat also contains compounds such as coenzyme q10 carnitine carnitine creatine and many other about 15 other minerals and compounds that are beneficial and in some cases critical to human health and cannot be found in plant kingdom I'll share with you one other interesting uh, thing about the agency that carried out the uh, studies and the experiments. They were actually uh, investigated by the US lawmakers about their practices, uh, how they classify something to be carcinogenic because the practices were not all that ethical and studies weren't carried out using the scientific method. Sort of what we just discussed in my video. Another interesting thing I found while researching for this video was that of 22 people that put together this amazing report about meat causing cancer is that a third of them were ethical vegans or climate change enthusiasts and what this means is that they may acknowledge that vegan diet isn't ideal for the human health but the concerns about well-being of animals or the environment is superseding the health of humans. And the problem with that is that that will give you some serious bias. So if you scratch the surface of this report and just get past the headline, digging into the details, whether you're a scientist, a researcher, doctor, a layperson or a big city mom, the conclusion is the only one. There is no firm connection between meat causing cancer in humans at the very best this report could be used to establish hypotheses that further has to be tested in the clinical settings following rigorously the scientific method however that's not what happened the who classified it as a carcinogen and the next day all the headlines nightly news morning shows and everything in between around the world declared meat to be a carcinogen now it didn't matter processed meat versus uh, fresh red meat it was used just interchangeably so the man on the street believes that red meat will give you cancer because that were the headlines all right so this will do it for this week's video guys don't trust the headlines really get into the bottom of it all and take control of your health because nobody else will all the materials that i use to put this video together i will link in the description box check it out i want to highlight one uh, website it is diagnosis diet by dr georgia Edie, who is a harvard trained uh, psychiatrist and she digged in into this whole report like line by line broke it down for us lay people it is really easy to understand and you will be shocked when you get to every single detail of it if you like this kind of information if you want to be in charge and really take control of your health subscribe hit that notification bell and i will see you in friday findings bye